Today's tutorial is long overdue, where we're going to look at a practical application of using Blender's new matrix nodes. We're going to learn how to make a missile follow along the actual orientation of the missile, which we can automate to make animating objects like this much easier. In fact, you could use the same thing for background fish or birds or maybe bugs, if at all you please. So we're going to learn a lot of concepts, including simulation zones and matrices. So there's a lot to unpack in this video, and hence I strongly suggest watching it. And without further ado, let's actually begin. Since we're going to be using geometry nodes, we're going to have our default cube selected, and we're going to bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then switch this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll tap N to remove the side panel, and we can press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree. Now we're going to go ahead and select this group input and tap X to delete it. Next, we want a bunch of points on which we can instance our missiles. So let's press Shift A and search for the points node and just plug that into the group output. Now this count is going to be how many missiles we want. And for this tutorial, I'll just use five missiles. Now you see all of these are still present exactly at the origin, but I need them to be spread out. So in order to spread them out, I'm going to press Shift A and search for a set position node and I'm going to offset them on the X and Y axes. And since I want to do this by a random value, I can just press Shift A and search for a random value node and change this from float to vector so that I can change it on the X and the Y. Since I don't want to move it on the Z axis, I'm going to change this Z value for the max to a value of zero. And then I can press Shift, click and drag to select the X and Y axes. And I can change this to something like minus five and do the same thing for the max values and change this to a value of five. Then I can plug this into the offset. And now you see I have them randomly distributed. Now on these points, I want to go ahead and instance a missile. So I'll press Shift A and search for an instance on points node. And I already have a missile that I created. I can just drag and drop that and you can use your own object as well. If you don't want to use a pre-made object, you can always create your own right over here. For example, you could use a primitive cone and plug this mesh into the instance and follow along with the tutorial. However, if you want this missile along with the entire completed blend file, you can buy that from my Patreon linked down below, or you can go ahead and join the monthly tier that gives you access to the blend files as well. So now that we have all of our missiles, we can go ahead and start with the actual matrix nodes part of this tutorial. So first thing that we need to do is actually create a simulation zone so that we can change this on every frame. So press Shift A, search for simulation, and then simply plug this output from here as the input of the simulation zone, take the output and plug that as the group output. Now that we have this, we can go ahead and set the transformation for every single instance within the simulation zone. So press Shift A, search for a set instance transform node and plug that in right over here. Now for this transform, we're going to have to use a transformation matrix. If you don't know what transformation matrices are, definitely check out this video over here where we take a deep dive into the mathematical intuition behind what's happening when we use transformation matrices, what they are, how they operate, and different applications in which they're used. So if you haven't checked that video out, definitely check it out right now before we continue on with today's tutorial. However, once you're done with that, let's go ahead and continue. So to create this transformation matrix, we're going to press Shift A and search for a combined transform. And now if we were to plug this into the transform, you'll see everything goes back to the origin. And that's because we are stating that the entire transformation for every single instance should have a translation of zero as in it gets set back to position of zero. Similarly, the rotation and scale also gets reset. A simple fix to that is pressing Shift A, searching for the position node, and then simply plugging this into the translation. And now we have them back to where they were. And now is where we get the real power of matrices. We're going to be able to control the rotation as well. So let's press Shift A, search for a combined XYZ node because we want to actually rotate it just on the Y axis. We could rotate it about the other axes, but for this particular tutorial, if we just rotate it about the Y axis, we'll get the effect that I want. So now we've plugged that in and I want it to be rotated by a random value. And I'm going to get that random value by using a noise texture. Now the noise texture factor goes from a value of zero to one. So you see all of them are going to be tilted towards the right. Since I want this to be tilted towards the left as well, what I'm going to do is press Shift A and search for a math node. And I'm simply going to subtract a value of 0.5. So now it's going from a value of minus 0.5 
to a value of plus 0.5. To make this value be even greater, I'm going to press Shift A and search for a max node. And then I'm going to plug that in. And I'm going to change this to multiply and multiply it by a value of something like 5 so that I get a good amount of rotation on both the negative axis as well as the positive axis. So now that I have this, we actually want to move this on the z-axis every single frame. And this is where you'll actually see why it was a lot harder to do without transformation matrices. Previously, you'd have to use something like a set position or a transform geometry node. If you use a set position and you offset it on the z-axis and you actually play this animation, you'll see irrespective of the orientation, they're always going to move on the global z-axis. That is not what we wanted. The same would have happened if we were to use a transform geometry node and we were to plug that in and just move it on the z-axis by that amount. So you'd see you'd have the exact same thing. And in fact, even worse is when you're using the transform geometry, you'd have to do it for the entire geometry as a whole, and you wouldn't be able to do it separately for the individual instances. But now, since you want to do it on just the instances, we can actually use a matrix multiplication node, which is called the multiply matrices node, and plug that in to create transformation on the local axes. So that would be equivalent to changing this from global to local and then moving it about its local Z axis. That's something that was a lot harder to do previously. So now remember the order of multiplication matters when you're using matrix nodes. So what we're doing is we're first rotating them and then we're going to translate them on the rotated Z axis. So we can press shift A, search for a combined transform node and then translate it on the Z axis by 0.2 and plug that in. So now if you were to go ahead and play this animation, you'll see that it, it is going to work based on the rotation, but the rotations are too fast. So if I actually see it, you see the rotations are just too fast. To reduce the speed of rotation, what's actually happening is this scale on the noise texture is just way too high. So we can reduce this scale down to something really small. Let's go with a value of 0.1. And now if we were to play this animation, you can see how they're clearly moving according to the actual rotation that they have. So that is something that was very hard to do previously. And I'm really glad that they've decided to implement these rotation matrices within Blender. So now we have that. Next, let's go ahead and model out the exhaust coming out from these missiles. For that, we need to add in the exhaust every single frame. So we press Shift A, search for a join geometry within this simulation zone. And now we can go ahead and add in an icosphere. So if we press Shift A and just search for the icosphere and try joining that in, it'll get added into the center every single frame. So we just get a bunch of icospheres added into the center every single frame. That's not what we want. We want these icospheres to be present exactly where these missiles were present initially. And those were present at the location of the points over here. So what we can do is duplicate this instance on points node and then use this icosphere as the instance and use the same points as the points. Now, if we were to play this animation, you can see we get the trail created just as expected. However, there are a few things that we want to do. The first thing is these icospheres are a little too high compared to the actual exhaust of the missile. So I'm just going to press Shift A, search for a set position node, plug that in right over here and offset it on the Z by some amount till I get it to where I want. So I think something like that is good enough. Next, I think they're a little too large. So I'm just going to reduce the radius to 0.8 and then bring this up, maybe a value of minus 0.6 is good enough. Now, the next thing that I want is as this animates, the points that have been here, since these are going to eventually be shaded as a volumetric cloud, obviously the cloud should spread. So to make this spread, I need this to grow in size every single time. But if we simply add this in after the simulation zone, you'll see what happens is the points nearest to the actual missile and the missile would become enlarged. So to make these points that are being added in become larger, what we can do is we can actually have another simulation zone before this joint geometry itself. So let's just shift this to the back, press shift A and search for another simulation zone. Now we can plug this in over here and we don't need this connection anymore. If you have the node wrangler enabled, you can press control, right click and just remove that connection. Then you can plug this in to the joint geometry. Next, we can go ahead and just scale these up. So we can press Shift A and search for a Scale Elements node, plug that in right over here, and just scale it up by a very small amount. Maybe a value of 0 0.01 itself will cause enough scaling. So let's just bring this down, press Shift A, and now you can see it starts scaling up as time progresses. And that is exactly what we wanted. 
if you want, I think maybe we can change this to a value of 0 0.02 just to get it to scale up a little faster. So now that looks really, really nice and we have it scaling up as well. And that is perfectly good. The last thing that I want is a different icosphere with a slightly different color that's going to be present along with the missiles, but it's not going to be duplicated along with the rest of these. So in order to do that, what I can do is simply use another socket within this simulation zone. So I want the exact same points and I want an icosphere to be instanced on the points. To do that, I'm just going to shift this up and then duplicate this instance on points node and use the same points right in over here. In fact, I can choose this icosphere and set position as well right over there. But instead of doing that, I'm actually going to use another set position to give it some randomization as well. Or I can just create a new one. So let's just duplicate that by pressing Shift D. And then I'm going to go ahead and increase the number of subdivisions so that I can get some distortion. But we'll actually cause the distortion later on after the simulation zone. So then we can take this instances and plug this in as another socket to the simulation zone. And now we can cause this exact same instant transform to these instances as well. So let's just duplicate this, plug this in right there and plug this out. I think maybe if you don't understand exactly what's happening, what we're doing is creating this red portion over here by adding in another icosphere to undergo the exact same transformations as these rockets are over here. So it's actually really hard to see in solid view, but I think it makes sense when you are looking at the completed animation as well. So now that we have our actual missile plus smoke from here, and we have the actual fire object that I created over here, we have to join those two by pressing Shift A and searching for a joint geometry, and then simply plugging this in over there. So now we actually have that icosphere present, but I want to actually cause some distortion. So to create the distortion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to realize the instances. So let's press Shift A, search for realize instances, plug that in. And now that it's realized, I can go ahead and set position by pressing Shift A, searching for set position, and then playing around with the offset. That's going to be very simple. It's just going to be a noise texture. And remember noise texture, if we were to just use the color, it would go from zero to one on all the axes. We want it to be centered around zero. So we have to use a vector math node then subtract a value of 0 0.5 on all of the axes. So now it's centered about zero. And then we can press Shift D to duplicate it and change this to scale so that you can just scale up the effect to whatever you want. So maybe for now, I'll just scale it up by a value of 10 and we'll actually see when we go back to frame zero, what it looks like. So that might be a little too much. So let's just reduce it to something like that. And that should be good enough. Now, clearly that isn't moving with the rocket. And that is simply because we actually haven't connected this matrix up to the transform. Once we've connected it up, it'll move with the actual rocket. And that looks perfectly all right. So there, now we have the little flame that's also going up with the rocket. Just another small addition that I realized later on after creating the tutorial is right now, the flames are going to be fairly circular based off of the actual tutorial that we've created. If we want to elongate it along the local Z axis so that the flame is looking like it's actually protruding out from the missile and follows the orientation of the missile, we can do that by simply using another multiply matrices node. So if we just shift this over to the side over here and then take this multiply matrix node, press shift D to duplicate it, we can add it in right over here and use another combined transform by shift D on this combined transform ensure that you just change this back to zero and plug this in to the actual matrix node. Then to actually elongate it on the Z, you can go ahead and just scale it on the Z axis by something like two. And now you're going to have this elongated on the Z axis to give you more of the shape that's in the actual final render. With that, let's go back to the original tutorial. The next thing is actually giving the materials. So for the clouds, I want the actual exhaust material to be added in before this joint geometry. You could add it in before this simulation as well. Doesn't make a difference. But what we do is press Shift A, search for set material and plug that in over here. For the material, if you go to the material tab, you'll see there's already a default material. You can just call that as exhaust maybe. And then you can just select exhaust from this dropdown. 
Next, for that little fire object, you could create a new material slot. Press this plus button to create a new material. And that you can set over here because these instances is the actual fire. So let's press Shift A, search for set material, plug that in right over here. And I can rename this material to fire. And we're going to choose fire from here. Now, to actually see the materials, you can go ahead and switch your viewport shading to rendered. And then over here, I'm going to switch this also to the shader editor. Now, for the fire, I don't want it to be a principled PSDF. I want it to be a principled volume. So press Shift A, search for principled volume. And now I can go ahead and just increase this emission strength to maybe something like five. And for the emission color, I can just make it red. But if you want, you can also search for something like a Voronoi texture and then use this color as the emission color. But to actually select the colors, press Shift A, search for a color ramp node, plug that in, maybe bring these in. And I'm going to make this white more of a reddish color. And this can be more of an orangish color. So make this completely bright and make it orangish. And that should be good enough. Next, this color, I'm going to make it all the way to white and plug this into the volume. So now you see that looks a little bit like fire. We have these orangish sections, the reddish sections, and it keeps changing. So I think that looks really good. The next thing is the actual exhaust. So let's go ahead, select that from here. Let's delete the principal BSDF and use another principal volume node. Let's simply plug this into the volume. And I'm just going to reduce the density down to something like 0.2. And I'm also going to change this color to a complete white. Next, if we just switch off overlays, go back to frame zero, you can see that this is what we have. So we have our exhaust coming out and the little rocket with this. To make things a little better in the world properties, you can just select this and change this to a nice sky texture. We could use the default as is, but if you want to actually get control over the time of day, I feel it's easier to just use Pritham where you can just rotate this to determine exactly where the light is coming from. So if you want it to happen like over the sunset, you can just tilt this and that looks pretty good. The next thing is the light. I'm actually going to select this light and change this from a point light to a sun lamp. And I'm going to reduce the strength down to one. Next, just to add in a ground plane, I'm going to press Shift A, search for mesh plane, and I'm just going to scale that up. And I'm going to just press GZ and bring it down on frame zero, wherever the rockets actually were. So somewhere like that should be good enough. So that's actually all there is to creating this particular animation. Of course, you can play around with the camera position by going into the camera view and just pressing this little lock button to lock camera to view and then rotate how you normally would have rotated around the Blender scene. You can always create keyframes by going to the first frame, selecting the camera and then tapping I and then going over to the last frame and just changing it to wherever you want it to be and then tapping I. I think for the floor, I'm going to give it a new material. I'm just going to increase the roughness all the way and maybe make it a little bit muddy and I'll leave it just like that. So that's it. You can just adjust your keyframes to get it to be looking exactly how you want. And remember, if your playback isn't too smooth, change this from play every frame to frame dropping so that you get an idea of how fast these are actually moving in real time. But once you're happy with the way everything looks, you can always go ahead and just render out the animation. Before we end the video, Another thing that I'd like to say is that if you want this volumetrics to actually look a lot better, you can go over to your render properties, go down to volumes and just change this resolution to one is to two or one is to one. And similarly for the actual custom range, just increase this until they start disappearing. So in my case, I think I can easily place it at around 20 meters and reduce this end until they again start disappearing. So that'll give you the best results and the volumetrics will look a lot better. Hopefully you learned something cool from this particular video, especially how to use matrix nodes and integrate simulation zones as well. If you've actually watched till the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and it genuinely helps me as well. I will be releasing a short film very, very soon where I will be integrating a lot of these concepts. If you want behind the scenes, definitely let me know and I will be releasing behind the scenes until that short film comes out. Until then, maybe a couple more simpler tutorials will be released but I'll try to ensure that they're super useful and super informative as well. Until those come out, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.